Welcome to Mindful Biology. This is the fourth of five sessions about fidelity. By fidelity, I mean cultivating a quality of faith in the body and also honoring how the body remains faithful to us. At all times, our body's biology is supporting and advancing our well-being to the best of its ability, given the limits imposed by age, illness, injury, etc. Having faith in the body goes a long way toward helping us feel supported and at home in life. We're working with the ICANN acronym. The system is based on four qualities that we can bring to bear on our relationship with our bodies. Interest, compassion, appreciation, and nurture. Today, we're exploring the quality of appreciation. We'll be looking at how the diaphragm and the muscles of the abdominal wall and pelvic floor facilitate breathing. We'll also look at how the internal organs are affected by the breath. When we watch someone like this young man breathing with intention, we remember how the breath can be leveraged to support feelings of ease and empowerment. Beneath the surface, as it were, of course, a lot is going on as this young man or anyone else breathes. The major muscle of breathing is, of course, the diaphragm. The diaphragm is anchored at its base to the lower margin of the rib cage. It rises then as a dome into the chest cavity. We can rotate the view and see this dome-shaped muscle anchored below and rising up beneath the lungs. In this simple animation, we can get a crude picture of the movement of the diaphragm. It contracts and tightens, pulling air into the lungs on inhale, and then it relaxes and rises up on exhale. A helpful meditation practice can be to begin to tune in to the movements that one can feel within the body cavity in the area of the diaphragm. With careful attention, we can begin to feel some movement in this region associated with the activity of the diaphragm muscle. This is a nice mindfulness practice that you can use in sitting meditation or even while you're walking around in your daily life. So the diaphragm is of course important to our breathing, but other muscles participate. In particular, the muscles of the abdominal wall help the diaphragm in its task. So we know these muscles as the famous six pack that we can see under well-developed abdomens. Here in this animation, we can see how when the diaphragm relaxes and moves up, the abdominal muscles are simultaneously contracting. And when the diaphragm contracts and moves down, the abdominal muscles are relaxing. So as the diaphragm moves down, the abdominal muscles relax, so the belly enlarges. And when it moves up, the abdominal muscles tighten, so the belly flattens. We're certainly familiar with how the belly can move during breath. We're, of course, less familiar with the movement of the diaphragm, which is hidden from view. So there's an internal diaphragm muscle that we don't see, and then the familiar abdominal muscles that we do. And when breath is focused on abdominal movement, it's very clear that a lot is going on in this region. So the abdomen relaxes on inhalation and tightens on exhalation. The belly expands on inhalation and contracts on exhalation. And of course, the diaphragm is moving in a complementary way. The same thing can be seen from the front, of course. 
belly expanding with air coming in and flattening with air coming out. Now this woman is breathing with a fair amount of in attention to her abdomen. Sometimes the movements are, of course, more subtle. But clearly the abdominal muscles can be, and generally are, involved in the breathing process. An additional mindfulness practice can be to bring our attention to the area of the front abdominal wall and feel its movement with breath. There will be some movement felt spontaneously with almost every breath, and then we can also intentionally increase the participation of the abdominal musculature to get a sense of how it facilitates breathing. Now, when the abdominal muscles move in this way, there's an effect on the inside of the body cavity because, of course, there is a lot of structure, many vital organs inside. Notably, there's the stomach and intestines, but also the liver and spleen and so on. These are shifted as we breathe. When the diaphragm moves down, it has to move the organ systems with it. And when it moves up, the organ systems tend to follow. We can probably see this best from the side view. So first we remind ourselves that the abdominal wall is moving forward as the diaphragm comes down and backward as the diaphragm moves up. And then we consider how there is a collection of vital organs on the interior. Here we're showing them schematically as a series of intestinal loops, but as mentioned, there are other organs like the stomach and liver and so on, and they all move as the diaphragm does and as the belly accommodates. So when the diaphragm moves down and the belly moves forward, this reflects shifting around in there. The coils of intestines are moving into the space created by the expanding abdomen and out of the chest as the diaphragm moves down. And of course, as the diaphragm moves up, the reverse happens. So we get the organs moving up on exhale and down and forward on inhale, up and back on exhale, down and forward on inhale. This, this animation exaggerates the movements quite a bit, but you can feel in your own body that something is shifting inside. As we breathe, these organs are being moved, and that can be felt. And so yet another mindful practice is to, when you're sitting quietly or walking slowly, to just feel into the interior of the abdominal space between the belly button and the spine and between the right and left flanks. There's a fullness in there, and with careful attention, we can feel some movement as we breathe. There's one more set of muscles that participate in breathing that I'd like to discuss today, and this is the pelvic floor. So it moves in a way rather similar to the abdominal wall. It relaxes and bows down on inhale, and it tightens and lifts the interior organs up on exhale. Down on inhale, up on exhale. So you can see that as the abdomen moves forward, the pelvic floor moves down, and as the abdomen moves back, the pelvic floor moves up. The Activity in the pelvic floor is exaggerated in this little animation, but we can feel some slight movements like this with careful attention. And of course, all of this is coordinated with the movement of the diaphragm. So as the diaphragm moves down, the abdominal wall and pelvic floor relax to create space for the organs. And as the diaphragm moves up, the abdominal wall and pelvic floor tighten to lift the organs back toward the chest. The pelvic floor 
connects the two sides of the pelvic girdle, the bone pictured here that we're familiar with. Looked at from below in dissection in a male body, we can see how the musculature fills the space between the two sitting bones shown in white. The anal orifice is uh, located in the center, more or less, of the pelvic floor and the penile shaft up front. So this region is essentially a kind of muscular diaphragm that is analogous in some ways to the diaphragm muscle in the chest, although it moves much uh, less broadly. If we look at a female's uh, pelvic floor, we can see a similar situation. The female pelvis is broader because it must accommodate childbirth, and it also has the vaginal orifice in place of the penile shaft. For both these reasons, the pelvic floor in female bodies is more vulnerable to weakening with age and especially after multiple childbirths. So activities and exercises that strengthen the pelvic floor can be very helpful. Going back to the breathing body in life, we can imagine how the pelvic floor is moving down on inhalation and then tightening back up on exhalation. So it's relaxing to create space on inhalation and tightening to support the organs on exhalation. Seen from the side view, we can imagine how it is working in coordination with the diaphragm and abdominal wall. Getting a sense that as this woman exhales, her pelvic floor tightens, and as she inhales, it relaxes. And so a final mindful practice can be to bring attention very carefully to bear on the pelvic floor and to notice the subtle tightening and relaxation that occurs spontaneously with breath. It's also possible to intentionally augment the tightening on the exhalation phase in order to strengthen the pelvic floor. This concludes our fourth of five talks about fidelity. We've looked at the breathing process as it is facilitated by the diaphragm, the abdominal musculature, and the pelvic floor. I invite you to bring mindful attention to bear on all these regions as you breathe during seated meditation or as you move through your daily life. Thank you for watching.